of the um, January, uh, sorry, of the 2020 uh, decade. So very exciting uh, time of um, to think about the future. Um, so I'm glad you were all able to join us today. And um, we're going to have a little bit of future thinking uh, when, we, when we get a little bit further into the meeting. And I'm Una Daly, as you know, from the Community College Consortium for OER at the Open Ed Consortium. And I'm excited that you all could join us today. And I invite you to um, share uh, your information in the chat window uh, with others, uh, you know, where you're from, what college, um, anything else you want to share there. Um, because I know that we're spread across the country and we don't get a chance to see each other all that often face to face. So um, we've got a great agenda today. So thank you so much for coming. We, we are gonna um, have a little time to do some sharing and reflection um, and about uh, you know 2019 and what we see coming up for 2020. And then we are going to um, talk a little bit about, whoops, I'm sorry, about um, the OEG rebranding, um, Open Education Week. Um, <laughs> you can see I didn't update this. Our regional leaderships for open education and strategic planning, and then finishing off with our calendar for the spring. And I, I'm, I apologize, I didn't update uh, our agenda. We have a special guest speaker who will be uh, uh, telling us a little bit about open education policy and other updates, and that's Nicole Allen. So we're really excited to have her as well. Uh, I think you know all these characters. There's Liz Yada, who uh, does all of our support and is a wonderful uh, outreach uh, person for us. Um, and we also have another wonderful guest speaker, which is Paul Stacy, our executive director of the Open Education Global, who's gonna talk about the rebranding and some of our goals uh, for 2020 for Open Education Global. So lots of great stuff. And here is the CCCOER Executive Council. Um, and I'm just going to mention uh, my co-presidents, which is Lisa Young and Sue Tashjian, who make all, all of this possible. Um, it really just do amazing work along with the rest of the team here. You can see our professional development, our new member VP, the folks who work on the website with us, and those who work on strategic planning, partnerships, and special projects. And uh, we always do want to mention our emeritus folks down there at the bottom, Quill, James, Barbara, and Preston, who've worked with us in the past and continue to work with us in an advisory capacity. So any questions about that? All right, well, thank you that, for introducing yourself. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit uh, before we get into the main agenda. Oh, here's our members. Um, so you can always see this, uh, this map if you go to our website under about and click on members. You can see our members spread across the country and we're very excited to have a lot of you here today. Um, we have some new members who just joined us this fall and I wonder if any of them are on today and would like to say hello. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just call out the college names and if, and if you're there, please turn on your mic and, and say something. We have East Los Angeles College, which of course is in California. We've got Pima Community College, which is in Arizona in the Tucson area. Trinity Valley College, which is in Texas. Uh, Chippewa Valley uh, Technical College, which is up in Wisconsin. Vince is here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Vince. Anything new on your open RN you want to share? No, just that the tech first uh, textbook, which is a pharmacology text, is actually being piloted this semester. Um, and then we're opening up the review process um, through the rest of the spring. So making great progress. Exciting. Um, if you have like a link for people, you know, if they want to get involved in the peer review, if you could put that in the chat window, that would be super. Um, and then uh, we also have um, Des Moines Area Community College, which is in Iowa, and they joined us this summer. I don't know if Tom is on today, but uh, welcome to them. Um, 
and we have San Jacinto College in Texas who we've worked with for a long time, but they actually joined us this last year and we're really excited to have them join us. And finally, Butler College um, in Kansas, and they just joined us this last fall and we're very excited to have our second college in Kansas. Uh, lots of good stuff happening there around open in Kansas. Um, and I did also want to mention that we have two folks today on um, online who are not from new colleges, but they've taken over uh, new positions uh, with CCCOER uh, because someone else left their college. And that's Amy Larson from Lansing Community College, who is now taking over from Regina Gong, who left last summer. So welcome, Amy. Thank and you. also, do you want to say anything, Amy? No, just hi. Hi, great to have you today. And um, also Bruce uh, Massis, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Bruce. Uh, Bruce, is from, um, Bruce is from Columbus State uh, Community College in um, Ohio. And Rachel Dilley, who many of you may have known, um, I certainly did and did wonderful work. She uh, moved on to another position and Bruce has taken over for her. So welcome, Bruce. All right, thanks, Una. All right. Um, Lisa, can I turn this one over to you uh, to uh, share with folks? Absolutely. Um, Happy New Year, everybody. We are thrilled to have you all here. And we thought that we would um, do a little of activity with you all. So what we'd like to know is, what about 2019 are you most thankful for as you reflect back on the past year? And then as we look to the, to the future of this new year that we're in, in this new decade, the 2020s, um, or the roaring 20s, what are your next steps for open in 2020? And so we've developed a Padlet, and you can go to that URL, it's bit.ly slash cccoer2020. I believe it's case sensitive. So please make sure that the cccoer are all capital. And when you get there, um, you will see two columns, and in those two columns, you can click the plus sign and add comments and thoughts as to what you are most thankful for in 2019 and what your next steps are for 2020. And I see that some of you have already started um, adding to that. So fantastic, glad to have you all. Oh, it's in the, um, the chat box now too. So you can just click through to that link and you, we're getting some great comments in regard to what we're thankful for in 2019. Things like collaboration, dedicated practitioners, support um, in terms of looking back and looking to the future. Um, yeah, getting funding, um, continued and continuing to support OER, publishing promotions. We're seeing a lot of um, great things in our Padlet. You can just scroll right down and see scaling previous efforts. You can scroll down and see all of the wonderful things people are contributing. I'm seeing thankfulness for continued employment, re retirement, um, the dedicated faculty, our members here at CCCOER. And in terms of looking to the future, we've had some more posts. Um, the webpage, big projects, work, work with specific departments on campus, helping others, doing some great things. So um, please continue to contribute um, to the Padlet and we'll continue on with our program. Thanks, Lisa. And thanks Rebel for sharing that in the chat window as well. Um, 
collecting review standards for OER. Submit here. And I know I saw that going around on the Lib OER email list, so that's wonderful. Um, now I want to give a little uh, planning update. And actually, since Rebel is here with us, and I'm so glad uh, Rebel, of course, is from, um, she's from the Florida Virtual Campus from FALSI. Um, uh, and I always forget exactly what that acronym stands for, but it's for the Florida Libraries. Um, and Rebel, do you want to talk about the Open Ed 2020 planning meeting that you're holding this Friday? Um, so we're just um, trying to get the ball started. I know there's been some discussions with um, some private parties in the back end. So this is just kind of a, a community meeting for anybody who had um, entered into the community forum that they wanted to be involved in the organizing process in any way. Um, this is kind of like just a group um, come together and you can let us know what part of organizing um, you wanted to contribute or be a part of. Um, there is a group document that I created just to kind of track um, because this is just kind of a brainstorming uh, meeting to track anything that um, is um, said or wants to be said at that uh, meeting and then pass forward to anybody who wants to continue um, efforts of organizing or um, being partners or leads for this. So um, I know there was a discussion in several areas. We had said, oh, well, what's going to be the next step? We just really didn't know. So um, this is kind of um, hopefully a way to get people together so that we can start having those next, next steps. So. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I, and I see somebody put that in the chat window as well. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Lisa, for putting all, all that information in the chat window about how to get involved there um, in that meeting. And thank you, Rebel. And I can see a lot of other people are thankful that you're giving them the community a forum to speak about this. And it is Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. I think probably can read that on the slide, but just uh, for folks who weren't aware of that earlier. And um, next up, we have uh, Nicole Allen giving us some policy updates. Uh, and also a, a big update is around, um, she wanted to share about the Cengage McGraw-Hill merger, um, which um, I'm not sure if we've talked about before um, at CCCOER, I mean, in one of our meetings. And it's really a pretty, um, important um, thing to be aware of and the possible implications of it. So Nicole, are you there? Yep, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody. Uh, well, thanks so much for inviting me to come uh, talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening uh, at the, the national level in terms of policy and, and you know, the publishers and the market. Uh, you know, we're, Spark is, is, you know, such close allies with CCC OER and, um, you know, we're so supportive of this community and uh, it's been a while since uh, I, I had the chance to really connect with you all, so it's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I wanted to just brief everybody on, on sort of where things are at with the Cengage McGraw-Hill merger. I think, uh, you know, many of you may have seen uh, the merger was announced in uh, last May. Uh, I can turn on my camera if you can see me. Um, and uh, this is a merger between uh, uh, two very large companies. The current uh, college textbook market is dominated by, by three companies. There's Pearson, who has about 40% of new sales. Uh, and then the uh, Cengage and McGraw-Hill are a little bit over 20 each. So combined, uh, they're going to hold well over 40% of the market. And, uh, you know, as we all know from, uh, you know, basic economics and a free market system, competition is really important. But uh, especially in the textbook market, things don't really work uh, the way that, um, uh, you know, things do in a normal market because students are required to buy whatever materials they've been assigned. So publishers have the ability to set prices uh, really without being concerned. And, uh, you know, that's what's caused the rapidly rising prices over the last year. And, uh, you know, over the past three years or so, prices have started to shift a little bit as, as you know, students have really started to vote with their feet and, and use, uh, use copies and rentals. And the publishers have really been forced to respond by, by shifting to digital. 
and Sengage and McGraw Hill, their case for the merger is, is you know, very much saying that by combining, they're going to be able to offer, you know, digital materials faster and at lower prices. But, uh, you know, Spark and, and, you know, virtually every other stakeholder group in, uh, in education thinks that that is just wrong and false. Um, so the merger is actually being opposed by everything from the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities, the National Association of College Stores, representing college bookstores, uh, by student groups, uh, by consumer groups. <clears throat> and uh, Spark submitted a, a detailed 49-page uh, filing to the Department of Justice that performed an antitrust analysis on the merger with respect to uh, federal competition guidelines. And our major case was that- mm -hmm. You know, uh, we talked about this. Um, a merger between these two companies, especially with Cengage launching their unlimited program that's sort of an all access, all inclusive plan, it would likely push the market in a direction where basically institutions have the choice between two large subscriptions to catalogs. And that would basically destroy competition in the market and basically set us up for prices to rise really rapidly in the future. And we also made a case around the concerns about student data. So putting two companies in control of the vast majority of the market uh, would also concentrate a lot of student data in the hands of just a few companies. And, you know, in the age of platform monopolies and tech giants, there are lots of questions about uh, sort of the use of algorithms and the equity concerns around that and the privacy concerns about uh, data breaches and, you know, how that can really have a negative impact on, on students throughout their lives. So where things stand right now with the merger is that it's under review uh, by the U.S. Department of Justice, and uh, it has been under review for uh, well, uh, well over eight months. And, uh, you know, the companies set the expectation that the merger would be approved in early 2020. Uh, at this point, that seems unlikely because it's, uh, the, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand have also opened investigations into the merger. Uh, it's looking like the, the review is likely to take longer, although uh, the, the U.S. antitrust review process is actually a little bit of a black box. So it's hard to know what's going on right now, um, and there are not a lot of levers that we can use to oppose it. Uh, so, you know, what, what we're doing is reaching out to allies in Congress to provide oversight to the Department of Justice, talking to state attorney generals that could challenge the merger if it goes through and really just making sure that stakeholder groups are aware of, of the negative impact that this could have for students. So uh, we'll see. Um, you know, in the, in the current antitrust environment, um, mergers uh, do tend to get approved in, in some way or another. And if it happens, I think, you know, it is gonna change, remake the market. And I think that may be an opportunity for us to really push uh, harder for OER. But if it's not approved, uh, I think that that will also cause some disruption in the market. And, you know, either way, I think open educational resources are going to continue to be an important piece of how we get access to students. So uh, the work that all of you do is so amazing and so important. So I just want to wrap up by pointing out two other things that might be of interest on the policy front. Um, the first is that Spark maintains a 50-state uh, policy tracker where we keep an eye on, on state legislation pertaining to OER and we've also released the state policy playbook uh, that provides policy recommendations and those are up on our website. And also in related news, <laughs> uh, there are rumors right now that the, the executive branch at the federal level is considering policy that would uh, make the results of federally funded scientific research available to the public immediately upon publication. And there's actually a letter, um, since there's not a lot you can do to, to stop the merger, there is something you can do to help support this. There's a letter at oainthusa.com that you can sign to just show your support for the idea of, of making taxpayer-funded research available to the public. Um, and you can also go on, hashtag, on Twitter with the hashtag OA in the USA, and there's a big debate over <laughs> whether <laughs> OA in the USA is a Bruce Springsteen song or a Miley Cyrus song. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can uh, weigh in on that. Um, oh, I see a comment in the in the chat. I know I'm over time, but maybe I'll just quickly mention 
So at the end of last year, Congress approved $7 million to extend the Open Textbook Pilot Grant Program. Uh, we do not expect to have any updates about when that funding is going to become available for application um, for, for quite some time. Uh, the first step will likely be a, a call for public comments, um, and as soon as there's more information about that, we will definitely be coming to the community to make sure that everybody is equipped to, to be able to respond to that. Um, I would look at uh, second half of 2020 for opportunities to apply, although that big caveat that, you know, anything could happen uh, in the current political environment. Thank you. Great. Th thank you, uh, Nicole. That was great information. <laughs> and um, thanks for a lot. The, 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 you, you mentioned about the federal grant still still pending. Um, any other questions for Nicole while we have uh, such a valuable resource here? <laughs> well, I just want to say all of you are awesome. And as I said before, we're such fans of, you know, the, the CCC OER community and, um, you know, uh, uh, sending the whole Spark team uh, best wishes for, for the new year for you all. And unfortunately, I have to hop off, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm just an a email away if, if there's anything we can do to support you. Great. Yes, rock in the USA. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Nicole. And come back again soon. Sure thing. Bye. Bye. All right. We'll continue without my camera. I can't find it anyway. <laughs> All right. Paul. Um, Paul Stacy, please share with us. Um, some information about the Open Education Global Rebranding. And I think you all know Paul, he, he, he's a frequent visitor. He's our executive director here at OE Global, um, of which CCCOER is one of the regional um, nodes. Thanks, Una, and yeah, happy to be here. Um, so exciting to hear all this great work going on and see all of you joining in on this meeting. Um, so, if Nicole's rocking in the USA, uh, we're trying to rock globally, I guess would be what I would say. Uh, last year, I had completed a lot of um, interaction with people about the value proposition of our organization. And through all of that, it became clear that one of the strongest things that we provide to the open education community is this perspective on open education globally. And, uh, and in addition, the word consortium was a bit of a problematic word, especially when it needs to be translated into other languages. And, and sometimes uh, it even has a negative connotation in some countries. So, so we decided to um, change our name to emphasize the biggest value that we provide, which is the global context. And so um, you can see our new URL and our new logo on that page. We actually have soft launched the website already. Um, it's still a work in progress, but I just dropped the URL into chat. If you want to explore it, um, you're welcome to. It's a significantly different look and it tries to bring to the front um, all of the big initiatives that are the mainstay of the work that we do. Um, so, so yes, a slightly enhanced um, identity, I guess I would call it, and a greater focus on uh, emphasizing the global nature of our work. Um, another couple things that I'll quickly mention, um, some of which are here on this slide. Uh, one is that um, we did our big open education global conference last year in Milano. And as you can see, uh, this year it will be in Taiwan on the 20th to the 22nd of November. And I deliberately ensured that we were not overlapping with the U.S. Thanksgiving this year. So, so I hope some of you, I know it can be a challenge to get funding to go to a, a, an international conference, but uh, for those of you that can and those of you that have an interest in understanding the global landscape for open education, this is uh, one of the go-to events, and I really hope you'll be able to join us. Um, also, associated with our branding and identity, we knew, we have a new sort of member badge, I'll call it, that um, all members are invited to put on their website, and um, that's the, 
the OE Global member with the green check mark that you see there on the on the screen. Um, and one other thing I want to mention is that uh, this year we last year we broadened our membership categories to include primary and secondary. And this year we definitely are are working to try to expand and do more support and have more engagement with that sector. So I'll stop there. <laughs> Questions are welcome. Um, and I can give further updates too, Una, if, if you want. Yeah, let's see, Paul, I think we did, we, we had one more slide for you. I don't know if you- Sure, sure, I can see. Uh, but, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's um, yeah, okay. open it up for questions on the branding and so sure. forth. Sure, and maybe if, so feel free to drop questions into chat. Uh, a few other comments I'll make is that if you go to that website, you'll see we now have a special projects page which highlights some of the other projects we take on on an annual basis. And you'll see that we've worked to form a small network of organizations, sister organizations, to help with the UNESCO OER recommendation adoption. Um, and we also are supporting Open Education for a Better World this year. Um, actually with Nicole and others, um, last year we helped with the Open Education Policy Forum, which took place in Warsaw, and, and that's work um, that is continuing and will be uh, a highlighted set of sessions during Open Education Week. Lots of stuff going on. <laughs> um, where, how can you download the badge? Um, Una, I think you have the badge, don't you? Can they download it from the CCCOER website? Um, <laughs> I do have the badge, but it's on my hard disk. Um, <laughs> We could make that available. Great question, Judith. We'll, we will make that available to all of you so that you can download it. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Judith. Yeah, we'd love it that, uh, that people do that. Thank you. Great. All right, I am. <laughs> I gave you a little sneak preview there of the website, and I think we're going to switch. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> I think we're back in PowerPoint. I hope people are seeing PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that, but. Um, and Open Education Week is coming up. Uh, Paul, did you want to mention anything about that or? I'll just quickly say, I mean, as you can see, um, it's scheduled for March 2nd and 6th. Um, there was a lot of fantastic stuff that took place there last year and many of you participated. Thank you. And we certainly hope you'll participate again. Um, there's also a number of resources that have now been made available regarding this year's Open Education Week that you can download right off that website and use to help promote activities on your campus or virtually. Um, so please feel free to help yourself to those. Um, we've tried to design some materials that will be effective in terms of marketing and communication. Um, and that's the URL that you can see at the bottom of the, of the slide. Um, yeah, I don't know. Right. <laughs> do, you, do you want to add anything, Una? Uh, no, I mean, this is, yeah, Open Ed Week is really an opportunity to raise awareness on your campus um, if you want to use it that way and to plan activities around that. And then there's a lot of webinars that occur as well so that you can, um, you know, you can filter through those and share with um, your uh, folks on your campus. And some people um, have actually um, gotten together a group during Open Ed Week to come and watch some of the webinars live together and then use them as kind of a, you know, a discussion point. Um, CCCOER has a couple of webinars. We'll talk about that later that we'll be doing that week. But um, Liz Yada, um, our support specialist, will be putting together um, a little menu for each day focusing on community colleges and we don't want you to limit yourself in any way but just sometimes there's so much going on that it's nice to know you know and so we focus on the community college and, and she'll send that out every day so that you can see what's happening there and but please do um, take part in some of the global activities as well and maybe I'll just close to say that um, we're thrilled at the way this week, that week-long uh, time frame, has become kind of a, um, a yearly expected event every year that people use to plan these advocacy and awareness uh, campaigns around 
and um, and in some cases used as sort of milestone dates by which certain things are are to be completed so that they can present be presented during that week. Um, last year we had over six thousand four hundred participants from one hundred and twenty three countries participating in that open education week, including um, eighteen different languages. So so it's become quite a large go to event for amplifying open education around the world, which is really fantastic. Great, thanks Thanks so much, Paul. And um, I did wanna, yeah, and um, yeah, Judith says they're gonna use the week to launch their new digital education webinar series. Wow, Fantastic. that's exciting. Good. Glad to hear that, Judith. Um, Barbara Olowski, I think, might have had to take off, but she has she did have some exciting news to share. Um, I'm which here. You, oh, yeah, Barbara, do you just wanna mention your library thing? I know you, I know sure. you Sure, I just sent out the link um, um, on in the chat here. We did a survey last year sent out on the CCC OER listserv and also on the um, California Community College librarian listserv. We had 94 responses, two of them out of state and all the rest were in state. So we decided just to use the 92 in state and that represented 66 California Community Colleges. And it was questions that were on um, their work in OER, how much was part of their job or just what they did because it had to be done, what the needs were and so on. And I, we made a, uh, we meaning Michelson 20 Million Minds Foundation, which funded the survey, created a, a two page info flyer that is on OER Commons. I put the link in the chat just now. And the one I sent out yesterday, I am so embarrassed and mortified that I forgot to put the Creative Commons logo on. We proofed it so many times. Um, and so we added it and the logo on, of course, and then uploaded it into OER Commons. So you can click on it and down, if you want to download it and use it, use it from there. And it, we're using this as advocacy for helping to get more funds in, um, for librarians for their work and their support in OER and professional development funds for librarians. So that's that was the purpose of the survey to find out actually what needed to be done and what librarians were hoping they could, if, if they had money, what they could use it for. Wonderful. Thank you, Barbara. I'm, I'm sure there's other states that would um, find that valuable as well. Yeah. And can I add one quick thing to sure. that? Mm -hmm. um, also, we had put in a request and um, to the chancellor's office in California who put it forward to the, the governor's office and with a lot of behind the scenes work and help um, also with James Glapa Grossclag, Governor Newsom put in $10 million in his, in his um, budget for next year for expansion of the ZCC degrees and certificates. And not only that, he gave a, a shout out in his press conference. The first time he brought up the community colleges under higher ed, the first thing he did was give a shout out to ZTC work. And we owe a lot of that thanks to Una and to, and to James uh, for their amazing leadership on that. Now it's not signed yet, we have to wait, but the fact that the governor gave it a shout out means it would be harder for people to to concentrate on that much and in california with a huge budget that's little but in that budget we put in several hundred thousand dollars that would be distributed to california community colleges earmarked for their librarians so that they could go to professional conferences um, in the u.s and, and for using it for if they want to take the Creative Commons librarian, you know, the, the course or, the, or another course, or they wanted to develop their own community college uh, conference that they would have the funds for the travel and for, for staying, or if they wanted to go to whatever the new Open Ed 2020 is and so on. So we're really hoping that it stays in and we did a lot of advocacy and now we have to do even more to keep it in. And if yeah. anybody's from California wants to help us, I'll put my email address in and you can email me later because we need support from all around the state, not just Una and James and me. We, we need people from all around the state, uh, from different cities to, and we will give you the text for sending to your legislatures. So thank you. Thanks, Barbara. And Barbara's being very modest. She actually led this effort from the inception and um, so, 
<laughs> congratulations to her on that great on the great results. All right. So we wanted to give you an update on the Regional Leadership for Open Education program that was launched last fall. Um, and we had a face-to-face -face meeting with about 50 or 60 of you um, at Open Ed 2020 um, in Phoenix. And um, we have four work groups and I'm gonna let Lisa, because Lisa has been a leader in this area, tell you a little bit about the projects that um, these four work groups are focusing on going forward. Lisa? Hello again. Um, so with the Regional Leadership for Open Education, as Una just mentioned, we do have four different work groups. We uh, met in those four work groups in October and those work groups um, have grown a bit, which we're thrilled to have more membership. Um, but we are working on a number of goals that we established while we were meeting here in Phoenix. And so the policy and strategy group is really looking at developing a bibliography of statewide OER policies and strategies. And so, um, you know, Spark has the state policy playbook. There are a number of other resources. And so we're, we're looking at compiling those resources. So when um, a state goes to, or, or a group goes to start some kind of regional or state policy, or wants to embark on that or grow it, what have you, they'll have these resources available to them. Additionally, we're working on developing a lexicon, a glossary, so that we can all be speaking the same language. So that if um, the senator from Arizona is speaking to the senator from Illinois, they will be speaking the same language instead of um, a number of different um, verbiage. With the stewardship group, which is led, being led by James Glapa Grossglog, um, what they're really looking at is um, student advocacy. They're looking to expand and adapt the existing care framework and basically looking at privacy issues um, with um, data and all sorts of different pieces. Um, we want to be able to protect our students and make it more that care framework more actionable in the field of OER. Additionally, we're working on, um, they are working on taking the existing student bill of rights and making it um, more OER friendly and then also developing a bill of rights for practitioners that'll be explored later um, we wanted to make sure that we can accomplish everything that we're moving forward with so that that was something that had floated up and was definitely something that wants to be looked into but we're really focusing on that student aspect first um, in regard to professionalism which is being led by Quill West. They are looking at developing a matrix of all of the different open roles in our profession. Um, so we have OER librarians, and we have OER coordinators, and we have all sorts of different um, roles within our profession, but we're looking at identifying, developing that matrix of the different roles, and then the competencies that relate to that role. So they'd like to end up having a um, working document that has these roles and demonstrates what we need for professional development and existing resources and how the profession of an OER practitioner and OER professional can be supported. And finally, the sustainability group being led by Amy Hoffer is looking at the OER infrastructure. So they're looking at developing a virtual file cabinet of different templates for the higher ed in infrastructure. So things that we often see people ask in the listserv, but creating this as a solid resource. So things like um, existing documentation for OER job descriptions, tenure and promotion, um, things like student access policies and such. So the idea is to pull all of that together so that it's in one place so that we can access it and build upon it. And so basically what we're really looking at doing is looking at regional leadership and making sure that we have the infrastructure, the resources and support all pulled together so we can continue this work as a practice. Thank you, Lisa. And this is just amazing, this work that's going on. Um, and I do want to thank our leaders that uh, Lisa mentioned, including Lisa, um, James Glapa-Grosskleg, um, 
Quill West and Amy Hofer. And in fact, I think Amy's online today. Amy, do you want to say anything about um, the work you're doing? Hi, I'm here. <laughs> um, I, I really liked how Lisa expressed it. I don't think I could improve on it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll hear more about this during Open Ed Week. And um, I know many, many of you on this call are participating. If you're not and you would like to, please feel free to reach out and contact me or Liz directly. And we're happy to connect you with those leaders. Um, and so, yeah, so stay, stay tuned on that. And I want to mention there's a number of other groups that are doing regional leadership for um, open education, they may call it something different, um, but we are we are collaborating with them to, um, and so we don't plan to do any um, duplicate effort. But if you know if you have concerns about that, please do feel free to contact me. Um, but we are we are trying to stay connected with all of those groups because I think you know we're we're going to be much more impactful if we work together than we try to go off and do things on on our own. So. That's something we're real sensitive to. Alrighty. Um, so we did want to give you an update on the strategic planning that's been going on over the last six months. And I'm going to turn this over to Sue Tashjian, who has been analyzing uh, many of these trends for us, and which has been so helpful. Sue? Um, yep. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, when I started, um, on the executive council back in June, we started um, a strategic planning process that many of you have been involved in and we've had a variety of activities using the um, SOAR um, analysis. So back in June, we had an initial meeting um, and developed a survey that many of you filled out. Um, then we analyzed the survey at the executive meeting. Um, in September, we shared some of the results with you and we had you vote on them. Um, we shared them with the external stakeholders and the OEC staff um, at the Open Ed Conference. If you attended the breakfast, we did um, a visioning activity. And then we followed it up with um, interviews with um, eight external stakeholders. So um, it's been, you know, a busy six months and we've gotten lots of feedback that um, we'd like, you know, that we've shared with you and that we have available if you'd like to look more closely at it. But what we've done is um, narrowed it down. Um, Una, are you doing Yeah, that? sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we've narrowed it down to um, four possible aspirations or strategic directions. And what we'd like to do is invite you now um, to participate, after I briefly introduce each one, um, invite you to um, weigh in on which of the strategic directions you think is most important for us to focus on and, um, and which one resonates with you or would you be most interested in being involved in. Um, so the first one would be a toolkit, developing a toolkit for members. Um, this came up quite a few times um, to share, you know, a research toolkit to share um, impact, measure impact, collect data around student success, around cost savings. Um, the second one would be a train the trainers program for professional development in different areas of um, open education. Um, and let's see, so then the third one fostering legislative relationships and working with government agencies. Um, and I'm looking to see if there's a, there are any questions. Um, a member mentoring network where we would, um, you could request a mentor to help you with a project. Um, and, you know, we would pair up different members um, to help you achieve your goals for the year. And then the last one is promoting um, open pedagogy as a tool for equity. And so one of the things that we thought about was offering badges for all of the, the above. Um, so you'd have some sort of um, micro credentialing or certificate to share um, if you participated in any of these programs. All right, so Una, are you gonna? Um, 
So can you see the poll now? Yes. Yep. So with what we'd like you to do now is select your top two choices for um, future aspirations or directions. It looks like we can only select one. <laughs> I was afraid of that. Uh, yeah, that is, that is the limitation of the polling device. <laughs> All right, so submit your top choice. This is the second time we've used polling. We, <laughs> we do need to play with this a little more. Um, and we may end up sending this out as a survey um, to all of the members, because I know we only have about half our members online today. And we do want to get feedback from all of them. And I'm going to tell you, Sue, I'm not actually seeing any changes to the poll. Are other people seeing changes to it? No, mm, yeah. I'm not. And I don't know if I have. Yeah, to I am. <laughs> you are Liz. Oh, great. Um, hmm. It's interesting. I know last time you were as well, Liz, you, you saw those changes. I, <laughs> I don't know if it's a Mac versus PC thing. <laughs> um, so are you able to share the results? Or not? Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. I think probably people have had a chance to enter their, um, enter their ideas. Um, Liz, make sure you take a screenshot of it just in case we lose it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end it. And let's see, whoops. I also moved ahead a slide here. Yeah, I don't actually see the results. So I'm wondering, Liz, how about if, can you share your screen and show people the results? I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here so that you can share. Oh, okay. I can see them now. You can see them now too. Oh, let's see. All right, so it looks like, um, even though we all had one choice, it looks like the um, top two choices, um, exactly 35% each, um, were the toolkit for members to measure and share impact and promoting open pedagogy as a tool for equity. Um, interesting. And then the um, member mentoring networks and the train the trainer programs um, came in behind. So that's great. Um, thank you so much for your feedback. And um, we'll be sharing, you know, obviously more information and getting the members involved as we um, start working on the projects. Great. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Someone please share that with me. I don't know. For some reason, my computer doesn't like polls. Um, there were a few open questions that kind of have come up during this process. And um, I think we probably will invite your input in on these. Um, there are sort of bigger questions. Do you, do you want to speak to those, Sue, those bigger questions that have come up? Yeah, so these are questions that um, have come up over and over again about um, where do K through 12 four year colleges and universities fit in with CCCOER? Um, and we're not going to ask for input today, but um, if anyone um, will share these questions with you, and if any of the questions um, resonate with you, we invite you to contact us to um, talk more about them and to share your opinions about them because you've all been involved in this community. So what is, um, how does the Arlo effort fit into the strategic planning? Is, would that be duplicating effort if we, you know, they're working on policy and um, government relations? Um, what is the connection with the global OEG efforts? And um, how can we collaborate with other open-minded organizations or partner with them? So it's, these are some of the questions that we still um, need to think about as we go forward. Thank you, Sue. Um, I don't know if anyone has any immediate um, feedback to share. I, I will just say, you know, Amy was pointing out some things in, um, in the chat window about um, the fact that some of these things already exist. Um, and absolutely, that's true. Um, so that was kind of what our bullet point there is at the end. Would we like to collaborate with other 
um, organizations that are providing, say, train the trainer professional development or, um, you know, the toolkits around measuring student impact. Um, and yes, that is the answer. We don't plan to compete with them. And so that's why we put the competition question mark. Um, mm -hmm. We really want to reach out. And that's actually why this strategic planning process, which we thought was going to be like six months, we really see it now as being probably closer to a full year. And so that is work that we will be starting uh, or we're already starting um, but in January through probably May timeframe is reaching out to other organizations and seeing if they want to collaborate with us, if there's something that we can bring to their efforts and vice versa. So um, we'll, be, we'll be in touch about that more and would love to um, invite you to participate because I know many of you, uh, this is one of the networks you participate in and you also participate in these other organizations that are providing um, services around um, around open um, that our members are, are interested in. So, alrighty. Um, and feel free to put stuff in the chat window. We might have a few minutes at the end here, although we, um, to, to have a broader discussion. Oh, okay, Paige, go ahead. Paige indicated she had a quick question on this. <laughs> Do you have a microphone page? Yes, I do. I didn't know I could activate it. <laughs> there it is. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I, as I'm kind of writing down all these other things, you know, and where it fits in with our group, there's something in the Midwest called the Midwest Higher Education Consortium, MEC. Is right. anybody else familiar with that? M-H-E-C? Yeah. Um, we have been in touch with Jenny Parks. Okay. Yeah, Jenny Parks. So I didn't know, A, if there were similar consortiums in the East and the West or the South or however they divide out. And then B, I know the MET group is not just OER, but they've got a very strong OER component. And so we are trying to figure out kind of where that fits in with everything else. So if you're adding a list to this, I would think maybe consortiums like that might fit in. Thank you. Thank you, um, Paige. That's a really good point. Easier and to talk than chat for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and so, and we are, the, and that is something new for us. Uh, Jenny and uh, Tanya Spillaboy, who's with Witchy, um, Witchy and WCET, which uh, Witchy being the Western Compact, uh, they they spoke at one of our webinars in June, and um, we've been in touch with them, and we plan to work um, more closely with them. They're doing amazing work, so thank you for sharing that. All right, I want to uh, turn this over to our, my professional development team or our professional development team. Um, who would like to talk about the webinars? This is our spring calendar um, and we will post this probably, probably early next week, Liz, it's looking like. If we get lucky, the end of the week, but um, we have some great uh, webinars coming up and um, our first one will be in February. Um, and Suzanne, are you on with us today? Suzanne Wakeham? I don't know if I saw Suzanne. Um, well, Suzanne has got a great, she's our moderator for this webinar and she's got a great set of folks um, speaking. Um, she has Jenren Wetzel, I believe, from Creative Commons who will talk about attributing uh, OER, particularly when it's from multiple resources, as we all know, that gets quite complicated when you do remixing. And then she has uh, several faculty authors um, who are using different platforms, uh, both LibreText and Pressbooks, and are going to talk about their experience. So I think um, this is actually a nice uh, follow on to the webinar that Amy from Open Oregon is holding uh, January uh, next week, right, Amy? Or is it this week? I think it's tomorrow, actually. So Amy, if you've got that information, oh yeah, put the link in, thanks Amy. I'm right there with you, Una. <laughs> okay, super. Um, so uh, this is becoming a big interest for many, um, many of our members. So um, 
great synergy there. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the Open Education Week. We're going to have the Regional Leadership for Open Education webinar. That'll be at our, at our usual time, which is on Wednesday at noon. Um, that week, March 4th. Um, and so each of our leaders um, will be presenting about the work that they're doing and inviting feedback um, on, on where they are to date. Um, we also have two other webinars that week and they haven't been scheduled yet, so, but we'll let you know as soon as possible. One will be um, on the California Student Toolkit, which was developed um, this last fall and is going to be published soon. It's kind of in the editing process right now. And we're hoping to combine that webinar with, um, with the US PERGS folks, um, Caitlin Vitez and Kayla Nagel. I don't know if we've heard back from them yet, but we think that that's gonna be like really a powerhouse webinar, um, having both um, a number of students presenting the toolkit and of course, Caitlin and Kaylin who do that amazing work nationally with students. And finally, uh, we're gonna have a, a, a webinar um, led by Paula, um, um, Paula, I'm gonna screw up your last name, Minishitz. <laughs> pa Paula from, uh, from the um, College of Southern Nevada uh, proposed we do one a webinar for colleges who are new to OER. So she and um, Cindy Domica, uh, our VP of new members, and Lori Beth Larson um, from Central Lakes College, I hope I got that straight, uh, in Minnesota is going to um, lead that webinar. So I think that'll be fun because we know that uh, it's a real continuum uh, for our members. Some of you have been doing this for a decade, and some people are just in the first year or two. And sometimes it's hard for those people who are in the first year or two to uh, really understand uh, the level that other folks have gotten to. So we really want to provide a forum around that. Um, March, uh, March 18th, we're going to have our spring quarterly all members meeting. Um, and that'll, you know, focus around some of the open ed global election process um, and other things that are happening uh, in the summer. And we hope to make that a really collaborative meeting where everyone can share um, what their what their plans are for the summer. Um, let's see, um, Matthew, do you want to talk a little bit about our April eighth? I'm not sure if Matthew's. <laughs> I think he is, our, we are going to do an open pedagogy webinar. And we're still kind of working on that one, but this is a great time to provide feedback to us if you've got ideas. Are you with us, Matthew, or did you have to take off? All right, so stay tuned for that. Um, I do believe we're gonna have some of the folks from Montgomery College who are working on the Open Ped Fellowship. And we're hoping to get um, a faculty and student from uh, their uh, their college in uh, Maryland, um, but we're we're also looking for um, a few other participants. So if you've got some great examples at your college, please reach out and let us know. Um, we've got a great one in May on backwards design and curation, um, and I'm checking to see if Nathan is here today. Well, I don't think he is, but so stay tuned for that one. That's also going to be really interesting about how you do what best practices for. Um, open course design. And they, they've got some amazing speakers. Sue, did you want to share anything on that one? So we have, um, we have a couple of um, experts on um, universal design for learning theory and accessibility. And we have a couple of um, faculty members who have actually put um, the theory into practice in their courses and they're going to talk about the difference that it's made for them um, when designing materials and OER in particular. Great. Right. I think it's going to be a great webinar. Um, and in June, we're going to have kind of a fun one. Uh, it's going to be around sustainability, which of course is a really important topic. And um, we'll probably rely on some of you uh, who have sustainability frameworks. Um, and then there's going to be a there's going to be a panel for part of that webinar about if I had to do it over again, and so I bet there's a lot of you who might want to participate in that in some way, either to you know be a speaker or to share uh, things that you wish you'd known when you started out with um, open education. And finally, we'll have our usual summer quarterly all members meeting, and that's looking like June 10th. Here's um, different ways to get involved um, if you haven't um, if you haven't uh, had an opportunity before. Um, and um, 
<clears throat> we did. We do want to mention that we keep um, a conference list, um, and I and I want to thank Kelsey Smith at West Hills College who maintains that for us. Um, and maybe someone can put that in the chat window. But um, we try to keep all of the open regional and national conferences that focus on open education in that um, in that spreadsheet um, up on our um, up on our um, website. It's under um, Get Involved, and um, if you find that there is something happening in your um, area that isn't and it, that conference isn't up there, please let us know. Uh, you can add a comment or you can just email us and um, we're happy to put that in. And I think that's it. Did I miss anything, Lisa or Sue? Looks good. I think you covered everything. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you. And we're, we are at one o'clock or, or 4 p.m. if you're Eastern time, but I, you know, we'll still be here for a few minutes. And if anyone wants to uh, ask questions or um, bring anything else up, please, please do that now.